Hi, this is Frank Taylor and Nature in Your Backyard. And I'm here in my backyard with my dog Sam and Dee. I was told that uh, a lot of people are enjoying them photobombing some of my episodes. <laughs> they go everywhere with me. They help me find stuff. So today, like I told you, I always just go, I just go out and see what I can find. And every day I walk in these woods that you can see behind me that are all around my house and I wait for episodes to come to me. So what came to me this time? I was walking along, I looked down on the leaf litter, and whoa, there's a toad. <laughs> so I picked him up and I put him in one of my little plastic terrariums with some moss and some water, and I got him some worms and I put a lid on it that has lots of holes in it so it's well aerated. Animals need a lot of fresh air and air circulation. You don't want to put them in a, in a jar and close the top. You know, you, you need to have some ventilation. So anyway, so I kept them and first thing I did was I identified them because there's two types of toads that you might find around here. There's an American toad and there's a Fowler's toad. And this one appears to be the American toad. And when I show them to you, I'll show them, uh, I'll show you how to identify um, and compare the two toad species. But first, I want to make sure that you guys know the difference between a frog and a toad. Because they look awfully similar and they have similar lifestyles, but there's some, some things that are about them. Frogs have slippery, uh, moist uh, skin. Toads have warty, kind of rougher, dry skin. Frogs have slender bodies. Toads tend to have kind of, kind of plump bodies. Frogs have uh, long, uh, longer, much longer legs, and toads have shorter legs. Frogs really get around by hopping, and toads tend to crawl more, except you're going to see that this, this toad here is a pretty good jumper for a toad. He, he jumps pretty far. The other thing that's different is frogs are always living right in the water or on the edge of the water. If you think of like the green frog or the um, uh, bullfrog, uh, they live in very close association with the water. While different from those two frogs, the toads are almost exclusively terrestrial and they'll get pretty far from a pond or a lake. And uh, toads, just like frogs, lay their eggs in the water. The toad eggs are in long strings and frog eggs are, tend to be in lump. And in toads, their offspring are shorter lived when they're in the tadpole state. They will stay in tadpoles for maybe four or five weeks and then emerge as, as, little, as little adults. Toads will sometimes lay those eggs in temporary spring ponds in wet areas where the water with spring rains will form a, a big puddle or a pond and the toads will lay their eggs in that. The eggs change into tadpoles and eventually that by summertime, a lot of times those ponds that toads breed in dry up. The scientific name, I love the scientific name of, uh, of the American toad, Anaxyrus americanus. What does Anaxyrus mean? It means king or chief. And I've seen some big toads that I think the word, the scientific name is king or chief really works for me. Another thing that toads do is they have a, a high kind of trill that sometimes lasts for up to 20 or 30 seconds. Um, so I want you to go to the Virginia Herpetological Society website and click on American Toad and listen to the sound they make so that you'll know the sound. And if you hear it at night, you'll know it. You'll know what made that sound. So let's take a look at the American Toad. Right here in your backyard. You never know what you're going to find. And there's a make this invasive. There's a top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. 
you can see, I have some very sophisticated equipment here for the science I teach. I almost never go around with this. This is so great for keeping stuff and looking at it and getting aquatic samples. But now I've broken out this basin here because I'm going to open the top of the little terrarium that I'm keeping this toad in just long enough to show you. And today we'll, we'll let him back go back in the woods. And this is like almost exactly where I found him. So here we go. Here we'd like to introduce to you the American toad. And as his scientific name says, just like a king, he likes to sit right on top of that moss that I put in there for him. Now you can see he's got two nostrils and you can see that he's a pretty good jumper. And this is why I got this basin so I could keep him just long enough to show you. And he is ready to leave. But I am not quite ready to let him take off because I've got some things I want to show you. So let's see if I can catch him. He's not very easy to catch. All right, here he is. You can see that he has great big eyes, which is typical for predators. He likes to eat millipedes, centipedes, isopods, ants, anything he can find in the leaf litter where he lives. And you can see on the back here, he's got two very, very large glands or warts. And those are called the para, paratoid glands. Those are these two big glands right behind his eyes, right on his back. And it's those glands that will emit a toxin called bufotoxin. Bufo is the, the Latin or Greek word for frog. So on the paratoid glands, this is where the toad's poison is. And if the paratoid glands are squeezed, a milky white substance will come out that is, contains the poison. Now on the grand scale of toxins in frogs and toads, the American toad's toxin is not all that bad. There are some frog and toad species where the toxins are very extreme and very, 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 very potent. But the American toad's uh, toxins in that paratoid gland are not that bad, but if a dog or a coyote or a fox were to pick one up in his mouth and see if maybe he wanted to eat it, they would drop it pretty quick. And it might cause the animal to drool, gag, froth at the mouth. If it's your dog, you might want to wash out his mouth with a hose when you can. And as long as he doesn't swallow them, he'll be okay. If uh, he does swallow them, you might want to call a vet as a precaution. For a human, while I'm thinking about it, I want to dispel a myth. You cannot get warts from handling a toad. That's a myth. End of story. Now, if you handle a toad and you get that milky substance on your hands and put your fingers in your mouth or in your eyes, it'll really burn your eyes. If you put the toad in your mouth, you might be in trouble, but most people don't put toads in their mouths. So don't try it and no kissing toads, okay? You can see that right behind his eyes, he's got two ridge crests. Let's see. If you look very carefully right between the eyes and the paratoid gland, you can see that crest toads can do. So this is the American toad, different from a frog. You can see he has dryish looking, warty, very warty skin. He's got these two big paratoid glands on his back. His legs are shorter than a frog. Uh, this particular species has, has warts on the back that almost come to little spikes. And it's not so easy to see him in this, in this view right now. But let's take it, let's uh, take him out of here and let's put him back where I found him. So, can you see the toad? Well, not very well because he really blends in and he's camouflaged. So I've released him back into the environment which he came. And this is where he lives. Sometimes comes around our house. We have several toads that we feel like are residents that often come by. And he eats things here in the leaf litter in the springtime. He'll probably migrate down to the pond to find others of his species so he can breed and lay eggs in the pond. And he's off.
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Nature in Your Backyard on the American Toad and his scientific name. I'm not very good with scientific names. Anaxyrus Americanus. Anaxyrus means chief or king. And I think that's a great name for the toad because they do have that kind of regal look when they're sitting very quietly. Remember the difference between frogs and toads. Frogs have very slick, moist skin. Toads have warty skin. Frogs have a more slender body. Toads can be very plump. Frogs have longer legs. Toads tend to have shorter legs and crawl more than jump, except for today's one. He was sure jumping. Frogs lay eggs in ponds. So do toads. Frog eggs are in a big bunch. Toad eggs are usually in a string. And I heard that the American toad can lay 6,000 eggs in that string. Toad tadpoles tend to hatch pretty fast because sometimes eggs are laid in temporary ponds that dry up by the time summer comes around. I hope you have the opportunity to see the American toad. You'll probably run into one sometime this summer if you walk in the woods. So remember, I don't want you to just watch these videos. I want you to watch these videos and go outside and see what you can find. And I always say, you never know what you might find. So good luck. Remember to fact check me. Look up American Toad. Go to the Virginia Herpetological Society website. If you find a reptile or an amphibian, if you find a box turtle, fill out that form. They got great photos of all the different species and talk about how to identify species of salamanders, amphibians, and snakes, and turtles that you might, and lizards that you might find in Virginia. Best part of it is they've got maps of Virginia that show which counties you can find them. Because sometimes it's hard to identify something, but then if you know that it's only in three counties in the state and you're five counties away from that, maybe that's not one of the species that you're going to find there. But you never know. Thanks for watching Nature in Your Backyard. See you next time.